when I think of the things that are transpiring right now in my life currently, I consider the capacity that God has given due to being yielded and surrendered to God. I open my eyes sometimes and I wonder, how am I able to do everything that I'm doing in a day? And then I think about how we all have been given 24 hours in a day. There no, there's no one, there's no creation, there's nothing that exists in the world that does not have more than 20, we all have 24 hours. And, and I recognize that moving forward in purpose and moving forward in our calling has everything to do with tapping into the capacity that comes from God. Welcome to the Glory Hour, where spirit meets culture. And you know, we are all about having culturally relevant conversations from a spiritual perspective. And I am so glad that you are joining me today because we are going to get into such a rich, deep conversation about purpose. I'm so excited. In just a moment, you're gonna meet my dear friend, my dear sister, Miracle Reed. She is a fire starter, she is powerful, and she is all about helping people, propelling them when they're in the pit into their purpose so they can walk in the authority authority and the calling and all God has called them to be. And so you don't want to miss our special conversation. And also, you know, if this is your first time tuning into the Glory Hour, watching us, whether it's on YouTube or Spotify, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. You know, tell your friends and family, spread the word because it is truly beautiful what is happening on the Glory Hour. And I just want to say thank you to all of you who have been so supportive, just reaching out because couldn't do it without you. And also want to let you know, you know, just mentioned we are now on Spotify. So make sure that, you know, you can subscribe to it. You can listen to it on Spotify. So whether you're driving at work, maybe you're at the gym, making dinner, you can listen to the glory hour so you can edify your spirit. Well, you know, a lot of us, when it comes to this whole issue of purpose, calling, destiny, we have a lot of questions about it. You know, for many of us, maybe even for you, that you're on this place of self-discovery, trying to understand where God has positioned you, where God is calling you. You know, maybe you work in ministry, maybe you are in business or you're in education, media, government, or you're called to your family. God has a purpose, he has a destiny, and he has a calling for each and every one of us. But you know, even as when it comes to our purpose and our calling, even our culture, you know, we just hear a lot about it there's songs that are created, there's books that are written. We need to have a clear and definite understanding and wisdom and revelation to know where God is calling us to go and also to know where he's not calling us to go so we don't get stuck in a place where we don't feel personal fulfillment. And so I am so excited. That's why I'm bringing on my dear sister who is a fire starter and has a true call on her life to bring people out of that place of stagnation, out of procrastination and to propel them into the purpose. Miracle Reed is a pastor, speaker, and author who has more than 20 years of preaching and pastoring experience throughout the US, Canada, the Caribbean, and East Africa. She's also the president of Bridge of Hope Global, which is a ministry focused on the assistance and advancement of disadvantaged communities. She's also the founder of a new movement called the 606, and she is a pastor at my home church, Petra International Ministries in Pittsburgh. Here's our conversation. I am so excited to have my sister Miracle Reed on the Glory Hour today, and we're going into all about purpose, destiny, and calling so you can be all God has called you to be. And Miracle, you know, before we step into purpose, because I know with your life story, even how you were brought into this world, can you share a little bit about your story of how God brought you into the world? Because you were marked with purpose yes. from the beginning. Absolutely, absolutely. First, let me tell you, I am so excited to be on Glory Hour and to be in a space to represent kingdom advancement because that's really where we are in this season of life kingdom advancement and fulfilling purpose and being activated in our authority in God and you know when I look at my name by birth I was named miracle being 1.6 pounds at birth three months early both parents struggled in addiction and I consider what the doctor said would have been impossible they said there was no way that I'd be able to survive. They said I'd have breathing problems. I would be on um, you know, breathing treatments and have asthma my entire life, that I would have cognitive issues, all of these sorts of things. But even as a baby being born to parents who struggled in addiction, I had a grandmother and a great grandmother who knew the power of prayer. Come on, somebody. Come on, come they on. knew the power of prayer and they began to pray. They began to have people pray for me in local assemblies for this miracle baby. And so at a really young age, I knew the significance of my name. I knew that the doctors had predicted something that God had determined to be completely different. And I watched how a very innate understanding of God began to transform my life as a kid. I was 
five, six years old when I begin to hear the voice of God, when I begin to really understand the power of prayer. And so my entire life has been driven by God giving me a name that really speaks to who he is. And so I feel incredibly blessed. You know, everyone can't say that their name is a conversation starter. Mm. And God has really allowed some really amazing opportunities just based on basic conversation when people hear my name to be able to share the goodness of God and just what he's able to do. You know, I love when you're just saying that your name is a conversation starter because you are marked with purpose, just yes. like what you walk through, what you endured, you know, in the world or people say like, you shouldn't be where you are, but yes. it's been very evident from the beginning since you yes. took your first breath yes. that God is like, there's purpose and there's destiny in this child. Yes. And one thing I remember like um, when we were like talking and getting to know each other and just even hearing a little bit about your story is I love this as a young girl that you would have like a place you'd be in prayer and I think you had lights. Yes. You would string lights you on. You remember that. I do remember that. Oh, my yeah, goodness. I thought that was, like, so special and so sweet yes. about the lights. So like, yes. about the lights in your prayer closet? Yes. It was actually my entire bedroom. Okay, your whole bedroom. Yes, my whole bedroom <laughs> was covered in red Christmas lights. And I felt like it was a representation of the blood of Jesus, that I wanted to be covered with the blood of Jesus. And friends would come over and be like, why do you have these lights up? And I'd say, I'm covered with the blood of Jesus. And they'd be like, you know, Miracle... <laughs> you're real different. You know, this is, you have red Christmas lights up all year. But there was this ability that I had as far as the connection with practical things that put me in contact with God in communication with him and recognizing that something as simple as red Christmas lights, for me, it was a representation of the blood of Jesus. So I had them up for a significant period of time and they were just up. See, I, like when you when you share that story, I just think it's so beautiful. Where it's just like you were so infatuated in yes. love with Jesus yes. that even as a child, and I know there's so many of us like you know, I'm I'm thinking about when I was a child, I was like, I'm playing Barbies, I'm trying to match, you yes. know, Ken and Barbie to together make yes. this whole family. But just how you were so sensitive to the Holy yes. Spirit to know like this is my calling, this is my purpose. Can you like even share too? Was there a distinct moment where God was like, all right, this? my daughter is what I'm calling you to do to go forth and go out because at a very young age, you actually started preaching and going out and sharing messages of God. Yes. So talk to us about like that whole, pr that process of Absolutely. what God took you through. Absolutely. So I was eight years old when I preached my first sermon. By the time I was 13, I was traveling in the United States as an evangelist. And during that time, I would have dreams. I shared, I shared with a community, which we'll hear about in a bit. I shared with a community uh, that has recently been launched called the 606. I shared a few days ago about how I've been in a place majority of my life where I've heard God's voice in a really clear way. Even as a child, I was six, seven years old when I'd have dreams and the Lord would wake me up in the middle of the night at six, seven, eight years old with dreams, with fire and, and him coming back soon. And I'd wake my entire family up at six, seven years old, telling them that God was coming and that they needed to get their life together. Imagine a seven-year-old telling someone who's 40, 50, 39, 62, that it's time to get their life together. So at a really young age, I knew these things about God. So I tell people that I can't really pinpoint when I gave my life to God. It's a very interesting story because I don't remember ever not knowing him. I don't remember ever not having a relationship with the Lord. I believe that a lot of it stems from some innate supernatural things that has to do with my birth story and my name being miracle and me being taught that my name was an occurrence, that my name was the manifestation of God's ability as a miracle working God. And so as a result of that, at a really young age, I developed a really strong prayer life with God. I was very young, I wasn't double digits yet, and, and I love prayer. And during that time, I began to seek the Lord for my parents' salvation, for their salvation and deliverance at six, seven, eight years old. And I knew the power of prayer and I'd watch God transform my parents' life. And I watched people, seven, eight, nine, 10 years old, starting to invite me to give my testimony. Imagine a 10 year old coming to your church, giving a testimony of how they're a miracle child and how God has a purpose on their life, but I knew that God had given me breath in my body for me not to be common, mm -hmm. but for me to really be challenged in every area of life and to say, how could I use this for purpose? So I was very young, young girl. Um, at the time, at 13 years of age, there was a local church in the city of Pittsburgh who reached out to me. To this day, we still don't know how they found out about me. I hadn't preached since I was eight years old. They called my grandmother when I was 13 and they said, we heard your granddaughter was a preacher. We want her to come preach for a Sunday morning service which at that time was unheard of, a 13-year-old preaching a Sunday morning service. Now, at best, they may let you do Sunday school, right. a prayer, yeah. the welcome, read a scripture, but they invited me to, to preach. 
And years prior, a prophet came to the ministry, Petra International Ministries, Prophet John Tetsola. He came and he prophetically spoke over me and said, when I turned 13, that miracle signs and wonders were going to be distributed from my life and that I would begin to preach. The summer that I was 13, a local church in many ways, one might say randomly called. And so that was really the beginning of a continual journey of preaching the gospel and it never stopped. It continued traveling the world, pastoring out of the country. It never stopped. And I never once made a phone call. I never once asked anyone to preach anywhere. I never once asked someone, could I be invited? I never told anyone anything. It was like the light of Jesus was shining in my life in a way that started off just with my name. And then I began to have a really strong passion for people who didn't know Jesus. It is so beautiful what you're sharing. And there's just so many things that you, like, I'm, like my spirit is just like, just listening in and just being so at awe of God. Wow. Of that, you know, you grew up, it's just like, because I know you grew up, at, you know, in the inner city, like in, yes. like not in it, like a rough, rough yes. neighborhood. Yes. You know, that most yes. unlikely, okay, yes. that he's saying, no, I'm, I'm, my hands on her. Yes. She's chosen. I just even think of the scripture yes. as like a peculiar people, like this is a peculiar yes. child who was set on fire for God. And I want to take a moment because I know this person is so special in your life. Let's talk about Graham. Yeah. Your beautiful grandmother and the way that I mean she loved you and raised you. Yes. Let's let's talk about Graham. Yes. Let's honor Graham for a moment. Yes, Graham. yes. Let's honor my girl. My grandmother was literally the anchor outside of Jesus. Yeah. Graham was the anchor. You know, it's very interesting. My grandmother transitioned on 9-11 of 2023 laying right next to me in her bed right after I had just got done ministering that morning. I ministered that morning at 6 a.m. And I was in the middle of something that the Lord called me to release for the world called 30 Days of Fire. And I had no idea that during 30 Days of Fire that the Lord was going to transition her on day 11. I spoke that morning. She had no Nothing about her, nothing about her demeanor, nothing about her health. She wasn't sick. Nothing would have led me to believe that she would transition that morning. I literally have spent my entire life wondering, and I believe this will minister to a lot of people. I spent my entire life wondering what I would do when the Lord would transition her. How would I focus or be able to remain anchored in such a way without the presence of the love of Jesus personified, without the presence of that. In my entire life, if I had any fear, it was what would I do when God took Graham? What would I do? How would I manage? How would I, how would I cope? I've never come home to the city of Pittsburgh and she wasn't at the front door ever in my entire life. I've never not known her. I've never not had her. And the Lord began to show me earlier in 2023 that transition was coming. Had no idea he meant transition as far as her transitioning this realm. And the Lord began to prepare me. He began to show me things. While she looked amazing on September 10th. I mean, absolutely amazing. My girl was looking how she was looking. I believe that the Lord allowed it to be that way for her to have a grand exit. She actually had my dress on the last Sunday before she took her last breath, she was wearing my dress. And I look at how God used my relationship with her to keep me motivated. My girl never said that there was nothing I couldn't do. I mean, to my girl, I needed to start a cleaning company. I needed to start my own church. I needed to be a chef. I needed a restaurant. I mean, I could do anything through her eyes. And I believe that the Lord allowed it to be that way because the Lord knew that there would be people that I would come in contact with who wouldn't know how to move forward after loss, who wouldn't know how to move forward after looking at faith or looking at faith being challenged under fire or looking at fear. And so when she transitioned on 9-11, I just got done teaching. I came up, I called her Pook. I said, Pook, I'm gonna hop in the shower, then I'll get right back in the bed. I've been sleeping in the bed with her all year. And she loved it. It was like a slumber party every night. We went to sleep around 9 a.m., woke back up around 11, and she was staring up into the ceiling. And I could see her breathing, very shallow breaths. And she was staring up into the ceiling. And I said, Pook, Pook, can you hear me? It was like God had her attention that at that point, no matter how much she loved me, 
no matter how much I had her attention my entire life, there was one who was greater who was calling her, who was calling her home. And I found myself in a position recognizing that it was graduation season for her, but it was also graduation season for me. And it's been nonstop. It's been an ongoing explosion of miracle after miracle after miracle. And I find myself in a place of gratitude that the Lord would see fit to have given me a love like that on earth. A lot of people can't say that they've known love without disappointment. I never known disappointment from that woman, Barbara J. Johnson. I, I never, never knew disappointment. I never knew anger. I only knew love. I only knew a purity of the love of Jesus through her. Yeah. And so I'm grateful yeah. and I'm honored and I'm blessed to be a recipient of a love like that which she's distributed. And I am so incredibly grateful because when I look at what God has done in my mother and father's life, it was her prayers. It was the seeds that she sowed. And so it, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And I think a lot of times people have a hard time seeing beauty and pain. But I believe that God has used me in this season to teach people what it looks like to see beauty arise from ashes, yeah. literal ashes, yeah. and to see what God does with fire, yeah. to see what God does in our life when we're under pressure. Mm. You know, I'm just like when you're sharing that, like I just saw the tears and the emotion in your mm -hmm. eyes because I was there. I remember when you were preaching yes. that sermon and then I remember hearing the news like at, you know, um, was shared with our church community and, you know, from my heart because I'm like very similar to you that, you know, I'm an only I'm an only child yes. and I had a very close relationship with my grandmother. And I remember it was so unexpected yes. when she passed like um, granny, you know, you know, I had such a close relationship with my granny, Rosetta. And, um, and I just remember that like it was, I, she was in, she had like a, a stroke or something. She suffered something. I remember seeing her. She looked good. Okay. We were in the, like in the, the home yes. and it's like, she looked good. I was like, oh, yes. she's not going to go. And it was that I just remember it was like January 31st. She wow. was, she was gone and it was like going into my, like my senior year of college. And so my heart like broke for you because I know yeah. what it's like when you have someone you're so close to a grandmother yes. who prayed for you, who yes. loved on you. And it's sometimes I think, especially, you know, we're in our thirties. You just don't, sometimes you just don't think about what's going to happen when that person yeah. transitions. But what I love that you shared is so poignant. And what I see edified and is being displayed in your life yeah. is that out of the beauty for ashes, it's almost like, um, when Moses, you know what I mean? Like when he, yes. when he died and he transitioned there, that's how they got into the promised yes. land. And I think that is something when it comes to purpose, that it's hard for us to fathom that God would use the death. God yes. would l use the transition. So to true. usher us into purpose. So I want to hear like more because I know God is doing so many things and even to speak to that person that yes. I feel like I, I'm searching for purpose and I'm looking for things, but there's so much disaster. There's so much calamity yes. in my life. How do we like look for purpose even in the midst of that? I love that. I love that. I believe that we're really in a time, you know, where God is showing us our capacity. One of the major things that I've learned in this season of my life, being some months in now of the transition of her life, what I've learned is that we have a greater capacity than what we think. When I think of the things that are transpiring right now in my life currently, I consider the capacity that God has given due to being yielded and surrendered to God. I open my eyes sometimes and I wonder, how am I able to do everything that I'm doing in a day? And then I think about how we've all been given 24 hours in a day. There no, there's no one, there's no creation, there's nothing that exists in the world that does not have more than 20, we all have 24 hours. Yeah. And, and I recognize that moving forward in purpose and moving forward in our calling has everything to do with tapping into the capacity that comes from God. Mm -hmm. I believe personally that when people experience burnout, it's because there is this ability where we are tapping into our gift, but not tapping into our authority in God. And I've learned to tap into my authority in God, recognizing that I'm gifted, recognizing that there are things that God has allowed me to be talented in, but the capacity of purpose has to do with our authority in God. Say that again, because that, that, say that again. Yes, it's our authority in God. There are people, there are pastors, mega leaders around the world, not just ministry leaders, leaders in Fortune 500 companies who are tapping out because they have worked their entire lives tapping into their talent, their ability, their personal strength, but not tapping into the authority of God. Mm. 
When you tap into the authority that's given to you by God, there is a supernatural capacity that pushes you when you don't want to be pushed, that allows you to walk in supernatural joy where you don't even know where it's coming from, that dries tears from your eyes that you thought for sure you'd be crying for months or days or hours. It's the authority that's given to us by God that allows us to really walk in the fulfillment. And I've learned I've learned, and I don't want to say that I've reached any level of arrival, but mm-hmm. what I will say is that I have accepted the truth of capacity in a place of surrender. There's nothing I can't do. I believe there's nothing you can't do. I believe there's nothing that the people of God cannot do when they tap into the authority given to them by God, but it's being rooted and grounded in a surrender. Yes, I call it a nego. The, the Lord gave it to us during, during the 606. The nego is a, nego, is a non-negotiable no. It's a no that can't be changed. It's a no, no can't do it. No, can't do that. It's making clear what you've heard God do and sticking to that. We burn out because we don't stick to what we've said. You're, so you're, you're dropping so many like glory gems right now. Cause then I glory feel like, gems. yes, glory, you're dropping glory some glory gems. gems. Yes, girl. You're dropping some glory gems. Because, I love it. <laughs> you can, girl, take it. Cause I was like, I'm glory gems. gems. Yes. I'm glory gems because I love what you're saying is that, you know, we focus a lot of times on our capacity, but yes. it's about our authority. And I also love what you're saying. It's the no go. It is the nose that is actually symbolizes our authority yes. because I think our the Christian culture world culture all culture yes it's like seeing yes I can do this yes I can do that and there is something beautiful in the power of no yes. no I'm not gonna do that no I'm not gonna invest my time into that I like for me even in this season I'm not emotionally investing in myself into things that, that God part. has not called me to come on I'm not doing it and you know why ask me why why girl why why are you not doing it in the glory hour because there's no fruit there mm. there's no fruit When we come to the conclusion that every decision we make doesn't bear fruit, we start to use more wisdom concerning the decisions that we make. But we find ourselves giving yes in a season where there's no fruit. And God's like, if you would have gave a no, you would have realized that there was some energy and some strength and some capacity and some sleep. Come on, somebody. Some sleep that you could have had if you would have recognized that every decision you make doesn't produce fruit, only the ones that God has assigned to you. When you were just talking, the Holy Spirit just like, I just had like an image of Jesus. If we think of Jesus, Jesus didn't say yes to everybody. Come on. He wasn't going around doing Come all this on. stuff, being a busybody. He was very Come intentional on. that even he had time to go away and he listened to what his father was saying. And that's how he, that was, that's how he went out and did what he was called to do. Absolutely. And we're supposed to be modeling our lives after him. That part. But we're just too like, oh, I'm going to do this and checking off the boxes Absolutely. and having like my... Wh- that's not what he's calling us to. And I, and I feel like what you're saying is it's, it's, it's truth. It's revolutionary, especially for our culture, yes. because we live in a world where it's like, let me be on every board. That. Let me be on, let me do all these multiple jobs. Let me do something. What did God, call, what I'm hearing you say is, what did God call you to? And what is God really saying no to? Because it could be actually an issue of pride because you want everybody to see what you got and to say, look at all my accolades. Come on. But come mm, on, you, you said something right there. <laughs> You said something right there because that is the main thing that is a huge stumbling block amongst us, even as believers, not just the world, but, but as believers, we really wrestle with how we're going to get the credit for the next thing that we've done. How is this going to make me look good? How is this going to draw more people to me? Not to the message of the gospel, but how is this going to draw people to the message of me? Ooh, the message of me. And we find ourselves often feeling conflicted because we've drawn people to a message of me as if we had the ability to be someone's savior. And when we no longer have answers or solutions, we then pull the no one's perfect card. But if we would have drew people to the message of the cross instead of the message of me, then we would have been in a position to really show people where the solution really is. See, this, this whole thing, I'm like, yes, amen, amen, because there's so much of the message of me, and we see it, it's like exasperated on social yes. media. It actually makes me sick yes. that like I, I can't take in social media. I, I see certain people, it's like, it's all about me, 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 and I'm disgusted by it. Even, yes. I, I even know like just seeing just certain things of working in media and just seeing different things, like the people that I have noticed, and I think if we, we look at that have the most authority, 
right, that they have the most influence, they aren't about themselves. It's true. I'm, I'm not talking, I mean, there's some people we know, there's a whole like celebrity culture and people, whatever. But when I'm talking about people who are actually making real change, yes. people who are actually helping to advance the kingdom, yes. that are behind the scenes yes. and operating kingdom principles, yes. it's about others. Absolutely. They know, it's like knowing what your gift is, Absolutely. knowing where your position and your posture is, not being jealous, not trying to fight and be like everybody else. I know it's who true. I am. That That's important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's no competition in that realm. There's no competition at all. I believe that we're in a society right now as believers and unbelievers where there's this spirit of competition versus what does it look like for us to build together? And I think that when it relates to how and what we do, hearing God clearly, having discernment concerning what we give the no to, we'll find that a lot of things we think God is telling us to do, he's not. And we've placed ourselves in seats and boards and volunteer systems and collaborations and business plans that God actually didn't lead us to because then we're drawing from our well and not from his. And that's a major thing. It's major. Yeah. And you know, one thing I love, Miracle, is that you're all about, like, I've been a recipient, I've been a partaker in her ministry. I'm telling y'all, it is so powerful, like, oh, how you are just that. so submitted and surrendered to the Holy Spirit. And what, like, you're not, like, you're really not playing with us. Like, you're not playing with anybody. You're all about God. <laughs> and you're like, and this, <laughs> like, I mean, here's, like, you're, like, when you're, like, talking about the fire starters and just certain things, like, you're about initiating people yes. to step into the fullness of all God is calling to be. But what you're also not going to let us do, I was like, now we got to look at those issues and the things that are pitfalls for a purpose. Yes. And so can you talk a little bit and share, because I know God is doing so much of forming community, the 606, yes. like just doing things where you are yes. mobilizing women and men. Yes. You're mobilizing yes. people to come together and know their kingdom authority Absolutely. and their purpose. So. Absolutely. You know, Sydney, I'm, I'm so excited about what God is doing right now. One, because it wasn't my idea or my plan. Can we start with what happens when you don't have anything to do with it? That all you did was tell God yes, and then he manifests everything at a really accelerated late rate that you could ever imagine. So the Lord said to me at the end of 2023 that I was to start something called the 606. I had no clue what I was doing. Only thing I knew was that the Lord said 60 days at 6 a.m. He told me that there would be a fast for 72 days. He told me that there would be a 90-day fast. He told me that the first six days of, of every month of the year, that it would be water only. He told me to tell the community, for those who had never fasted, that God says, if you want it, I'll give it to you. If you want it, I'll give it to you. I'll give you the capacity. Those who had never fasted before, they said six days, water only. All year, 72 days of fasting of only water. I went on social media. I declared the word of the Lord. The Lord began to move and he said, miracle, you're not just going to do 60 days at 6 a.m. This is an entire movement. He recently released the language of crusades in the year of 2024 for the 606, the 606 crusades, where we will literally be traveling around the world, Kenya, Uganda, June, July, Chicago, Pittsburgh, throughout the years to come and this year, promoting miracle signs and wonders from a surrendered place and watching tangible movement. Now, here's the thing. This is happening on a screen. Every single day I wake up at 5 a.m., and I am fully dressed at 6 a.m. to lead the people of God who are also on a journey, seeking the voice of God, desiring his will for their life in an atmosphere of activation on YouTube and on Facebook. During this time of activation, God is coming for us. He's making it really clear that we're not going to be weak on the front line or we won't be on the front line. He's making it very clear that it's about flowing through the flowing in the anointing of God, the DNA of Christ, what it means to go beyond your ability, what it means to know that there are things in our life as believers that we tolerate, that we have the ability to dominate, what it means to really address even mental health, mental inconsistencies, what it means to be non-negotiable about what God says. And God is using the 606 on both platforms to produce a community of world changers that are establishing kingdom advancement in their sphere of influence. It's not a collaborative of preachers and apostles and ministers, but God is raising up prophets of the Lord. God is raising up people, men and women who function in miracle signs and wonders, who recognize that God is given them the ability to move beyond their lack and limitation. God's given me the ability to address their limitations on a screen. 
He's given me the ability to call out names that I've never met and to speak into their life, saying what God is saying, because people are looking for evidence of a faith that works, evidence of a God who loves, evidence of a movement that is authentically rooted in kingdom advancement. In the 606, God is doing it. We are a train with no brakes. We are a train moving by fire. And God is purifying the hearts daily to come to a place of repentance, activation, mobilization, and movement in the world. I love that so much and just like seeing how God is really like he's birthing it. It's his idea and just using people. And it's because what I'm hearing you say, too, it's like, OK, we are we know our knowing our authority, knowing yes. our calling. But in order for us to move forward, yes, in order for us to be advancement, we have to deal with the sin. Yes. We have to deal with what's entangling us. Yes. Like you have to be like, you know, the world like in the culture we hear being self-aware. Yes. You got to be spiritually self-aware yes. to understand, because I think. Even what we're seeing in our culture, in Christian culture, this things that are popping up in the news, it's because yes. there was a lack of surrender. There was a lack of accountability. We didn't want to address issues and we just pacified like, oh, we're not going to look at that. But now you see why leaders are falling and things are going down the way that they are. I'm not surprised. Whenever, no. I'm not surprised by what it, like, I'm, I'm really not shocked. Like, people are like, oh my gosh. I'm like, no, they're humans. But I can tell. It's like, where's your accountability? Where yes. were you submitted under? Where, where's your covering? Yes. And so what I love about the 606 community and how God has given you this charge and ushering yes. you in this era because yes. we're in a new era we're in a yes. new season for people to recognize and understand we have to have the fear of the lord we do if you don't have the fear of the lord and you're just that's pride i'm telling you like the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and yes. he reveals his secrets to those who fear him yes. and are willing to surrender and be like i'm gonna i'm gonna fast i'm gonna pray like it is miracle i just feel this season it's like a 911 season wow it's confirmation 911 wow. season. We see what's happening in the natural with the wars, Ooh. right? We see what's going on in Ukraine. We see what's going on in Russia. We see what's going on in the Middle East. We see what's going on. There's it's a 911 season. Yes. There's something happening in the natural, but there's something even deeper going on yes. in the spiritual. And he's yes. calling us to detonate. And I feel like what the 606 wow. and what God is ushering and I feel like he's calling you to do in the season is to activate the detonation, yes. to activate the glory bombs, yes. to drop on the culture so there'll be true change because people are tired. They are and I just even, even like your thoughts on like, we talk about revival. We're all crying out for revival yes. here in Pittsburgh. There's so many prophetic words about yes. revival, but I think it's, I think God is like, it's not going to be revival in the church pews and a, mm -mm. No. what is no. it? It's like the streets. No, it's, it's the, the streets. It's the empowerment. Yeah. The 606, we're the community of empowerment, activation and release. The release part is really key because a lot of times as believers, we spend our life being empowered, being activated. But we never move forward. Where is God calling you to do what he mm -hmm. called you to do? Because I guarantee he's not telling you to do with people that you go to church with every Sunday. I guarantee he's not telling you to do it with this cell group. I guarantee he's telling you not. You just the light you shines in darkness. And the Lord is calling forth a community of people who are walking in empowerment, activation, and release because they have an ear. E-A-R, empowerment, activation, release. They have an ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And he's not talking to us for us to sit. He's talking to us for us to disciple. This is a major season of discipleship. It's a major season of training. It's a major season of impartation of the gifts. It's a major season of impartation of movement. And this goes by way of really asking the Lord, Lord, wherever you place me, what is the ministry call? People who can't stand their job, they can't stand it because they don't look at it as ministry. They look at it as a means of financial gain, but they don't look at it as an open door to win the lost. But if you believe that your presence in an atmosphere was going to win the lost, you would go to work differently because you would believe that you're a solution in the atmosphere, not just another person making a paycheck, not another person just earning money, but literally asking the Lord, Lord, everywhere I find myself, what is it that you're saying to me in that environment? Am I being intentional? about seeking you because if we're talking about revival, we're talking about the underbelly, we're talking about what's stirring on the inside, we're talking about what you can't sit on because you're not comfortable without releasing it. We won't see that until we're okay with being the odd one out. We won't see that until we're okay with saying, you know what, if I have to do it by myself, I'm gonna do it. We won't see it until we are no longer comfortable with what we don't do. We're too comfortable with what we don't do. We choose it for another day. 
The 606 understands that, that as we move forward in the things of God, that procrastination only happens when you don't understand your worth and value in the assignment. You don't procrastinate when you understand the worth and value of the urgency of an assignment. Mm. We procrastinate in our gifts and in our abilities when we don't understand what God has given us the ability to bring to the table. This is a time where we got to know what we bring to the table. Healing, miracles, breakthrough, deliverance, healing. This is the message of the gospel. And I'm afraid that we often live in the blessing of Jesus dying, but we don't live in the benefit of him being raised from the dead. He died for one reason, but he rose for another. It's the activation and release of the resurrection that we often miss. We become okay with salvation, but the activation of discipleship in the world. That's why the word says, pray to the God who's over the harvest. Pray that he'd send more workers because the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. It's the activation of the call. Mm. I'm just like taking a sailor right now because you Jesus. dropped just so much wisdom and revelation. And it's and I think you're going to make the, the religious mad. The religious are like, OK, with doing I the mean, same. I mean, good company. Yeah, you know I'm in good company I'm then. Like, yeah, I love because I'm like the, I feel the same way. It's like I love even what you were pointing out about the the procrastination. Yes. Because I see that in like friends, I see it in just situations where it breaks my heart, where there's not this urgency, there's not this desire. Um, I, there's a book I was recent reading by the late and great Miles Monroe, and just talking about leadership and how it is actually demonic. Wow. Not to function in your purpose, not wow. to understand who you are called as a leader. It. Miracle, it changed me where I realized I had to wake up. What things am I sleeping on? Come what on. certain things am I just like sitting on the wait side? And also as I begin going back to the to go, right? Yes. Saying those things that like yes. I can't be doing anymore. God opened up and showed me, okay, you're stepping into new places. Yeah. There's certain things even as a young girl that you might have forgotten about, but I am bringing to the forefront. And I think this is such a... This conversation is just so powerful. There's so much that you've released. There's so much that you've said. And I think, you know, a lot of people, when we talk about purpose, it's like, well, how do I get to my purpose? How do I get called? But first you have to know the roadblocks. First yes. you have to know the, the hindrances. First yes. you have to deal with what's going within. And I love how you're addressing that and saying, yeah, we got to take a deeper look because mm -hmm. I love what you're saying about disciple, like even with Jesus, because I'm, I'm hitting this point where it's like, it is, we cannot be just okay yes. with just souls getting saved. That's, yes. that's, that, that's, that's, that's the start, but it's yes. like, there's so much more. Absolutely. And um, I remember even Tomi Arami that was, said something I was watching on YouTube and it landed with me. And it's exactly to the same point that you're saying and what God is speaking to you, where he was just saying like the church is equipped for a world that does not exist. Yes. We are having issues and we're, we're one, we're trying to like, it's like, oh, we just got to go save the yes. lost. It's like, but you don't understand the whole world has changed. Hello, the pandemic. Yes. We're in a different world. Yes. How do you relate to the world? Yes. We're not, not called, we're in the world. We're not of the world. Yes. But listen, you're, you're still, what's God calling you to do? Yep. You, How are you the solution? Do you believe that you're the solution? If we just started there asking ourselves the question, what has God created us to fix? What has God created you to fix? What has God pressed upon your heart? to meet the need. What, what need have you been created to meet? We're, we don't have that approach in life. Our approach is often me, myself, and I, mm -hmm. what's gonna work for me, and not what have we been created to fix. There are, there are multiple problems that we see in the world, multiple things, and no, we're not called to address all of it, but we are called to address what we're assigned to. And I believe that if we spent more time asking God, what is our assignment? Because we're not called to everything. I, I, I have a nonprofit organization in East Africa, Bridge of Hope Global, and I've been able to take travel teams with me every year since 2016. And I tell my travel teams every year when we go into Kakamega County, I say, you are going to see hundreds, thousands of needs. You are not assigned to every person you meet. That's the assignment of our Savior. You are to pray and you are to ask God, what is the assignment that you're called to meet? What is the assignment that you're called to respond to? What is it that God is asking you to do in that moment? And a lot of times I believe we don't function that way in life. That's the work that I do overseas, but let's bring it back to the US. Let's bring back to the goals that we don't give. Mm. Let, let's bring it to the fact that we feel obligated to do things that we're not assigned to do so we don't see fruit in areas where there is no fruit and the areas where there should be fruit, we're not assigned there because it doesn't look how we want it to look. There's not enough glitz and glamour for that area, but God says that's where the fruit is. And so we're challenged. We're challenged to consider where we are as a culture right now. 
where we are as a community, where we are as a country, where we are as a nation, what it looks like to address the world needs based on what God has given us the ability to do. And that's our voice. It's speaking with power and authority. It's allowing our words to literally give life to atmospheres that look dead and desolate and dry. It's the conversations we have with friends who we know that are in a low place that we choose to listen to instead of speak authority into. It's the atmospheres that we know that are low because of sickness, because of confusion, because of financial crises, and we don't address the fact that God is our provider and that oftentimes we feel limited because we've created a life that we actually didn't need. We've built on things that we actually didn't need. And so we find ourselves in a deficit because we're surrounded with things that actually don't give us life. Mm -hmm. And I believe that those are the questions that God is asking us in this season. Do you really need what you think you need? Or have you allowed this system of the world, which you had mentioned, we're in the world, but we're not of it. But we often operate by the system of the world looking to produce kingdom principles. We can't operate by the system of the world and produce kingdom principles. It doesn't work that way. That's why it's our surrender, our submission to the plan and the will of God and his terms and his time and his non-negotiables that we may see the fruit in the earth and in our sphere of influence. If I could drop the mic. <laughs> if I could just drop the mic. And as you were speaking, I just felt that God was saying is just to, for us to take a moment, you know, in the glory hour as we land the plane with the conversations yes. always having I'd like a final thought or just something that God has put on your spirit. And I just really felt for, especially for this episode. And I always pray and I say, okay, God, how do you want the show to end today? How do you want that? What, what do you want to land? And I really felt God was saying that we're going to take a moment because when you talked about the deficit hit my spirit, that to wow. take a moment for you to, for both, like just wow. to pray and just to minister to that one person that's watching that one person that is going to, has been struggling and wrestling with things. And so I just wanted you to take a moment to just pray. We're just going to pray and just speak, just yeah. speak life and just de declare things and just believe that things are going to be broken up so people can walk in the fullness of their yes. calling and their destiny because the hour, the hour is now. Yes. The hour is now. The hour is now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Glory to God. Let's rock it out. Let's, let's rock it let's out. Rock so it let's, out. Okay, because I know like Let, that, fi that fire. Let's rock it out. So I think you look at the camera. I was like, look at the camera. We can look at look at the camera. We All just right. go. We gonna just, Let, let's go. Yeah, let's go. go. <laughs> let's go. The fire of Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your power. I thank you, God, for what you allow us to walk in the activation of. I pray right now a release, a release, a release in the name of Jesus of every area we have willingly allowed there to be walls, a release right now in the name of Jesus where there have been chains, yeah, yeah, chains attached to the things that we become comfortable with. Right now in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, God, that where there have been lies of the enemy, where there have been distortions things that we've walked in the fulfillment of that there would be a release to every single person who is hearing these words every single person who is watching this broadcast every single person God who's coming in agreement saying that I know that there's more for me I know that there's more power I know that there's more strength I speak and I declare in the name of Jesus activation right now in Jesus name I speak and I declare that the lies and the assignment of the enemy that it will not work I declare that it's canceled now in in the name of Jesus. Devil, you are a liar. We always win, which means you always lose. I declare a release during the glory hour that the manifested presence of God, that it would meet us right where we are in this space, in your room, in your car, that the manifested presence of God would literally bring you come to conclusion about what God says. Yes, yes, yes. God, may you bring us right now to a conclusion that we are not in a place where we're wrestling, but we we are saying, God, I heard what you said. God, I know what you told me. God, I know what I have to do. I'm not going to wrestle. I'm not going to feel weak. I'm not going to feel limited. I'm not going to allow where I've been. I'm not going to allow what they said. I'm not going to allow the trauma. I'm not going to allow the disappointment. I'm not going to allow the low moments to define me anymore. I receive, I believe, and I come in agreement now with the power, with the power given to me by God through Jesus that I'm not settling, I'm not backing down, but I am walking and I'm operating in faith, knowing 
that I am everything that God says that I am. I encourage you in this moment to just begin to declare, I am everything that God says I am in the only name that never loses power and the only name with an undefeated track record. We say yes and amen, yes and amen, yes and amen. Ooh, glory to God. Glory to God. And, you know, just as you were, like, um, just speaking miracle Jesus. and just even right now, like, and you're watching, mm. just be sure to go in the chat and you can just comment and just agree or just even share, like, anything that you need us to pray for. Because even here at Corner, like, uh, the Glory Hour is on Cornerstone Television Network's YouTube channel. And also we are broadcasted, like, there's a special edition of the Glory Hour also on Spotify that we have a 24-7 prayer line at 888-665-4483 that you can call at any point and someone's going to answer the phone and come into agreement with your prayers and just as miracle was just exhorting us and she was praying the one thing God just started dropping in my spirit and I heard he talked about the builders and I just want to lead you to something in a time of prayer in a time of a quiet place that God started leading me to the book of Ezra and in this time that they were commissioned by the one king King Cyrus to build the temple and so they were going and they were building and then what happened is some of the people of that area and that land they they said we want to come build with you it says in the Bible that the people of the land asked to say like we want to come build and they said no we're not, we're not calling you to, you can't build where we're building. And what happened? There was a warfare. There was fight. They went to the other king, the new king at the time. And they were like, they're, they're saying we can't build with them. And they did all this destruction, all this stuff to in this, to the procrastination <laughs> for them not to rebuild the temple. But what ended up happening is it says in the Bible that there were some prophets that said, no, we're going to continue to build. And what I love, it said the eye of God was on them. The eye of God was on them. And as other people started asking questions, they had favor and that they were able to go to King Darius made this whole decree and said you know what allow them to continue to build and if anybody gets in the way of them rebuilding this temple that I'm gonna that we are allowed you are allowed to pull the beam from their house. And I just really sense and feel in my spirit in this season, what is God calling you to build? And be careful who is building around you. Not everybody is called in this season to build with you. Not everybody's part of this season is called to know your business plan. Not everybody called in this season is about to know that book. You have to be very discerning in this season who is called to build with you. Not everybody's called to build. If you look at even Jesus, Jesus is our example. Not everybody was called to be a disciple. There was a lot that gathered and probably many that wanted to be part of it. And I know the Bible doesn't go into all of that, but we know that Jesus had the 12 and then he had the three. And so in this season, even when it comes to purpose, that you need to get your three, you need to get those in the inner circle that are going to pray with you, that are going to intercede with you, that are going to fast with you, that you can go talk to them in the midnight hour when things are going down, that are going to lift you up and gird you up. And they will also be the ones to speak into your life and say, you know what? This is a pitfall. You know what? This is a hindrance. And I truly believe this is where God is calling us to do. My friends always say it's tight, but it's right. And we have to literally submit ourselves. We literally have to yield and surrender all. We have to say, you know what, Jesus? I'm putting it all in your hands. I'm trusting you. And even if there's been an immense battle, and I think there's so much, we, we talked about this early in our conversation, but there's such a battle that's going on. And guess what? When the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard. And you know, one of my favorite scriptures and I know miracle you like this too you know what it is the kingdom of heaven suffers Come violence on. but the vi take it but the violent take, take it, by it. Force. take it the violent take it by force so you have to get violent that's when you were talking miracles talking about the authority you have to get some authority you can't just sit back and watch everything happen let me tell you some of the most powerful moments in my life we're not in a boardroom, we're not in a meeting, but it was me and Adonai Savayot, the Lord of the angel armies, and me on my knees and just praying and other people coming around to pray. And I'm telling you, I have seen chains fall. I have seen things come apart because it's like when you know your authority, when you know your identity and who you are in Christ, whoo, there is nothing like it and you are unstoppable. Who, friend. Do you have any final thoughts, any last words? You'd you know, like you're just amazing. Aww. I give God praise just for your yes. Aww. The glory hour and the atmosphere that's created in something like this builds God's kingdom in such a powerful way. And it's an honor. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to represent the Lord. It's a privilege to represent the 606. It's, it's just an honor. It's an honor. And I'm excited about what the Lord will continue to do with your yes as you're activated in all the authority and all of the power and everything that you've been sitting on, that this would be a season in your life where you'll go forth full throttle, knowing that there's no stopping you. Not even you, you can't even get in your own way. Mm. 
No stopping you. I love you. This has been great. This has been so fun. So thank you all for watching The Glory Hour. Be sure to follow, subscribe, share with your friends because this is truly a movement. Thank you so much, Miracle. You are truly an incredible woman of God. Like you... I just, I just know that there's going to be so many open doors wow. that are going to be coming into your life. And wow. just because of your surrender and your yes, and you're, you're fearless. And so I say, wow. go, girl, go. I received it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Love y'all. We love y'all, too. <laughs>